you already have a course on JavaScript and you learn about arrays, lists are following the logic of arrays where you can access a list of elements by accessing a specific index. Okay, what is really is a list? Let's first create a variable colors. However, we want to store more than one value, as an example, red, blue, and green. By writing the syntax, we are creating a list of three items or a variable color that contain three colors, red, blue and green. We can also use double quotes of each item, however in this case it will be converted to a list of strings instead of colors. Or we can also separate the items by a comma. Feel free to use any format that seems logical for you. So this list can contain any data types. It can contain a list of numbers, boolean, or any other data type. So now that we know how to create a new list, we need to access to this element. Let's use the debug directive to access to the content of variable color. As a result from the terminal, we have the three colors, red, blue, and green. However, this is not why we pick up this list feature. What we want to really is accessing each color separately. They are two super useful building set functions that we need to use when we are dealing with lists. The first one is length which will give us the length of our list or which will give us how many elements are in the colors list. This function takes only one argument, which is the list itself. As we see here, we have three as a result, which indicate the number of elements within the list. If we add another element pink to the list, it will show four. And the second interesting function is end. This function will help us access to the element depending on each index or its position on the list. This function needs two arguments. The first one is the list, which is in our case colors, and the second argument will be the index we want to access to. Let's go for one, which is the first color on the list. Unlike arrays on any real programming language, the first index is always zero. But SAS isn't following this logic. The first item of a list when we are dealing with SAS is always one and not zero. And the result here is red. Cool. Let's access the second color by using the second index too. And the result is blue. Then for the third one, and the result here is green. You can keep the window test for the other colors or add some colors to the list and access to each index. Now that we have an idea on how to create a list, find the length of a list and access to a specific element from the list, let's go for a real example when we will access to the element of the list using a for loop. Let's remove this code right here and move to the list.scss file. What we have here is a global styling for the item selector. And if we take a look at the index.html page, we will find that we have three items using the class name item. So nothing complicated here. The goal I want to achieve is we have to add a class bg pattern at each of the items, which will save a new background image for each item. This background image should be different. We have at the images folder three images with different names, darknoise.png, hexdark, and illusion. And these are the images that are one that you use for each item respectively. Let's first add the selector bg pattern. We use the ampersand because the classes are at the same level and not nested. Then we access the first item by using the nth child one selector. Then we add the background image property that has a value of the first image we want to use. So in this case, dark noise. And we do the same thing for the other child two and three that uses the hex dark and illusion images. But writing code like that is too repetitive, not adjustable, and imagine if we have a list of 20 items. We'll have to write the code 20 times. And imagine if we decide to change the names of the images, we should go through each background image to do the modifications. To avoid this situation, we'll first create a list of PG patterns that will include the images names, dark noise, hex dark, and illusion. And instead of writing the end child selector three times, let's first comment that out. Then we'll use the for directive to create a for loop to access three items. So a for the variable i, which will be used to get the incremented number, and from one, because we want to start counting from one through three, that will include the number three on the list. So this loop will start counting from one to three, which is the equivalent of the number of images on the BG patterns list and the number of lists in our index.html page. So we can even replace this tree with land BG patterns 
which will add the length of the list dynamically. Let's use debug to see the value of the variable i within the loop. We have respectively one, two, three. Good. Let's use this value of i to access to each nth child of the items. There we use the string interpolation within the nth child selector. We can access each item. Now we have to change the background image. Then we add the URL, the folder of the images. And for the last part, the URL should be the image name. Remember that to access a specific element from a list, we use the built-in sets function and that needs as the first argument a list, which is the BG patterns variable. And for the second argument is the index we want to access to. So in this case, the i variable. Voila, we have three different background images for each element of the list of items. Let's remove this commented code.